Hey, good morning. It's Saturday. Early for a Saturday, right? Typically, this is a day that we all sleep in. So, if you're getting this now or um, plug in, late, in later on, it doesn't matter. Um, there's only one bad time to study God's Word, and that is never, right? You might be a morning person and you prefer to study God's Word in the morning. Um, that's when I prefer to do it because my mind is so full of nonsense. You may prefer to do it over your lunch break. You know, you may want to take your Bible and sit down over a sandwich at lunch and study God's Word then. Um, it might be something that you do right before you go to sleep. You kind of get your mind ready for sleep is to meditate and think and think on how good our God is. So there's only one bad time to do it, <clears throat> and it's never, right? Um, morning, Peggy and Allison, my mom, my sister, Lorraine, Kim. I love you all so much. Thanks for hanging out with me this morning. Let's have a word of prayer. There's Wilma too, yay. Um, let's have a word of prayer and then we'll jump in. We need to continue to pray for President Trump and Melania. Um, there's a lot of people in that circle that I think is uh, getting diagnosed with it. So we just need to be, we need to be praying for sure. Um, you know, I, I made a post about this last night, but, you know, whether you agree with President Trump's politics or, or not, or whether you're a Republican or Democrat or wherever you line up, whether you like him as a person or not, we still need to pray. Because when the president's sick, it really, it's kind of a scary thing for our country. So we need to be, and plus the Bible tells us to, right? The Bible tells us to pray for each other. It tells us to pray for our leaders. Um, and uh, that's just what we're called to do. Bottom line. So, um, so let's, today we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Um, Paul is talking about in this chapter, he's talking about, talks about a lot of things, but he really focuses his attention um, in this chapter on spiritual gifts, spiritual gifts. Now, all of us as believers have at least one spiritual gift, okay? Um, and so Paul's going to teach us about that today. So let's have, let's pray first. Lord, thank you for this morning. It's early and we're just thankful that that we can join together as a group of people who we have one goal, one goal, and one goal alone is that we want to get to know you better. We want to know you better so that we can understand us better. And Lord, when we understand ourselves better, we understand you better. And we want to be more like your son, Jesus. We want to align our lives with you. We want to uh, seek after the, the your will uh, in our lives, and um, we, we want to do that, Lord. And so be with us as we study your word, as we unpack it together. I just pray that you bless this time. Lord, we love you, and we ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. All right. So let's see. Yeah. So, yeah, a lot of schools are starting up next week. My wife's school starting up next week. My daughter Cassie teaches in Laurel County. They've been in for a few weeks now. Um, Clay starts next week. Williamsburg. And uh, yeah, absolutely. We need to be praying for kids and families and teachers and principals, superintendents, everybody. All right. Let's read 1 Corinthians 12. People ask me sometimes what translation of the Bible that I'm reading out of. Um, I have I like a lot of different translations. I'm not... I'm not tied to one. Um, there's some better than others. This one I'm reading out of the New American Standard Bible. It's very it's it's written in a, in in a, in a modern with modern language, but it is very very true to the original texts. Um, there's two different kinds of translations. There's literal translations, which is literally word for word translations. And there's also something called a dynamic or a phrase by phrase, um, kind of idea for idea translation. Um, an example of one of those would be the NIV. Um, uh, an example of um, word for word would be the King James. 
ESV, New King James, New American Standard. Okay. There's also paraphrases like the Living Bible, the Message. There's others like that that are paraphrases. Not really great if you want to do like hardcore Bible study, um, but it's a great companion to maybe you want to read it in a word for word and then see what it says inside of a paraphrase. So again, just a little bit of talk about translations. Um, here we go. Let's read this together. First Corinthians 12. He says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to the mute idols. However, you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus is accursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of ministries and the same Lord. There are varieties of effects, but the same God who works all things in all persons. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to no one is given, or to, for to one is given the, the word of wisdom through the Spirit, and to another the word of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit, and to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit. And to another the effecting of miracles, and to another prophecy, and to another the distinguishing of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of the tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually, just as he wills. For even as the body is one, and yet has many members, and all the members of the body, though they are many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot says, because I am not a hand, I am not part of the body, it is not for this reason any the less a part of the body. And if the ear says, because I am not an eye, I am not part of the body, it is not for this reason any the less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But now God has placed the members, each one of them, in the body, just as he desired. If they were all one member, where would the body be? But now there are many members, but one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, or again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, it is much truer that the members of the body, which seem to be weaker, are necessary. And those members of the body which we deem less honorable, on these we bestow more abundant honor, and our less presentable members become much more presentable. Whereas our more presentable members have no need of it. But God has so composed the body, giving more abundant honor to that member which lacked, so that there, be, there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. If one member is honored, all the members rejoice in it. Now you are Christ's body, and individually members of it. And God is appointed in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, administrations, various kinds of tongues. All are not apostles, are they? All are not prophets, are they? All are not teachers, are they? All are not workers of miracles, are they? All do not have gifts of healings, do they? All do not speak with tongues, do they? All do not interpret, do they? But earnestly desire the greater gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. All right. Thank you, Lord, for your word, right? Um, so what's Paul driving at here? All right. It's interesting because remember, Paul is talking to the church in Corinth and he's trying to help them figure out 
Because remember, we're just coming off of chapter 11 where he really scolds them hard about the fact that they're divided. Remember how the richer people, members of the church, were coming to the church prior to services and eating together, and they were, uh, they come there for the purpose of taking the communion, the Lord's Supper, um, and they, they were getting just foundered with food and getting drunk. And then when the poorer members of the church would come, there was nothing left. So Paul again is saying to them, you are unified as a body of Christ. So, um, you know, God wants us as a church to be unified, whether we're talking about your local church being connected and together in a community and a family, all with the purpose of driving the message of the gospel into your community, or whether we're talking about all the churches in a community or all the churches around the world. We're in it together. And regardless of the color of your skin or where your church is or anything else, we all worship the same, the same God. Okay. And so, um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's reality. So Paul tells him here in verse, verse two, he says, you know, that when you were pagans, you were led astray to the mute idols. However, you were led. So it's all anchored in the fact that Paul said, y'all used to worship idols here in Corinth, but now you worship the Lord. He says, we've been given, we've been given God's spirit. So if you're a believer this morning, you've given your heart and life to Jesus, which I pray that you have. If not, it's not too late to do that. Now's the time to do that. But Paul is saying that all of us have been given what he calls here, uh, down in, in another verse, verse seven. But each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. So no matter who you are, if you're a follower of Jesus, we have been given a spiritual gift. At least one. Maybe more. Okay? It's not a question of, do I have one or do I not have one? Yes, you do. How do I know this? The Bible says that you've been given a spiritual gift. And so... Uh, it's amazing to think about, but here's what we know. We know that your spiritual gift that you've received and that I've received have been given to us for one reason, and that is to glorify the Lord. It is to um, take the mission of the gospel that we've been given, this incredible message of hope and grace and mercy to a world that desperately needs it. So the gifts that we have are not to glorify us, but it is to glorify our Lord. And so not everyone has the same gifts. That's another thing that we've got to consider. Paul talks about here, he says, he lists various ones. And he said to, to, you know, to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit, to another, the word of knowledge, according to the same spirit, to another faith, to another gifts, to another, the effect of the miracles. So God created you and I, with a very specific giftedness in mind. And it says here, we've been given that for the common good. For the common good. What is that? The gospel. To lead others to Christ. To go and tell. Remember uh, when, when Jesus told his disciples, go and make disciples. Teaching them everything I've commanded you. So it's not... This giftedness that we've received is in no way to exalt or lift up ourselves. Um, this is another thing. Every member must be celebrated. Okay? Um, we are all a part of the body of Christ. That's, what the, that's another name that we use for the church is the body of Christ. So all of us are parts of that body. So Paul uses this metaphor here of the human body. To talk about, he says, um, for the body is not one member, but many, in verse 14. If the, put, if the foot says, because I'm not a hand, I'm not part of the body. So, yeah, there are certain parts of the body, our big toe, for example, our earlobe, you know, that they're not 
fancy, right? Um, we think about the eye, right? The eye is very, very important to us, our eyesight, our vision. But Paul is saying, just because one member of the body does something that might be a little less honorable than another, that does not make that part of the body any less important. <clears throat> so if your giftedness, and how do you determine your giftedness? You know, like, how do I know what my gifts are? Well, they're online. You can find some, you can find spiritual gifts inventories. Some are better than others. Um, I would suggest start with praying to the Lord and saying, Lord, will you reveal to me what my spiritual gift is? Because we want to be able to use it, right? We want to be able to put it to use. God's given us a gift and we need to be able to use it for his glory. So as you think about that, that's important. Um, but we need each other. we got to be unified with one another. We all have different jobs. We all have different giftedness. We're unified. Verse 26 is good, and we're going to be wrapping up here real, real soon. It says, if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. That is a beautiful picture of the fact that we as brothers and sisters in Christ must help each other carry the load of, that life brings. If one of us is hurting, we're all hurting. If one of us is rejoicing, we all rejoice because we're all part of the body of Christ. The blood that we share as brothers and sisters in Christ is the blood of none other than Jesus himself that he shed for us on the cross. So it's important here. And verse 31 says, but earnestly desire the greater gifts. So that tells me that we can actually, that God will give us additional gifts. It says, but desire the greater gifts. So you and I, through the power, everything that we're talking about here stems from the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Which if you're a believer, the Holy Spirit resides inside of you. That's why the body calls us a temple. The Holy Spirit lives inside of you. And he says, and I will show you a more excellent way. I love that. You know, following Jesus, giving your life to him, aligning your life with his life, having his mind is certainly a more excellent way. I love you all so much. Uh, tomorrow is 1 Corinthians 13, which if you read it ahead of time, it is all about love. If you've ever been to a wedding, you've probably heard 1 Corinthians 13 read in that context. But um, we're a little bit over time. But I love you all. Have a great Saturday. Um, it's going to be a good one. It's cold outside this morning. So if you get outside, put a jacket on. I love you all. Have a blessed day. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for this word that you've given us. I pray that you would just let it just work on us, Lord, all day long. And um, we will give you the glory for everything. Because, Lord, if, um, if you're not in it, we don't want to be a part of it. That is the truth. That is true. Lord, we love you. We ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. All right. I love you all. Have a great, great, great Saturday. And we'll see you in the morning at 7 uh, for 1 Corinthians 13. And then Sunday school, if you're looking for a place, do Sunday school at 930 tomorrow morning. Join us. It's going to be good. I love you all.